Hi, I'm Dick DeAngelis. Welcome to a new episode of Inside Fairfield History. We're going to show you today an interview we did with Dr. Robert Bakker. Now, Dr. Bakker is a foremost paleontologist here in the United States. He was one of the people who helped reshape modern theories about dinosaurs. Particularly, he added support to the theory that some di dinosaurs were warm-blooded. and uh, But he did a lot of other things. And most notably, he was, uh, for people like me, he was one of the key people to give advice to the people who did Jurassic Park. They even gave him a little nod and made one of the characters who got eaten by one of the dinosaurs. And they, they, that was Dr. Bakker's with the hat and everything. So when you see him, you'll go, oh, that guy looks familiar. That's what it is. Well, he was, even though he is the curator for the Houston Museum of Natural Science, he, the curator for paleontology there, he actually was in Morrison, Colorado at a small museum there when I sent my daughter in Laura in 2017 with a little film crew and they got some very interesting and candid shots. I had called Dr. Bacher and said, hi, we're doing this, this film about the history of Fairfield, life before Fairfield. And I said, we really need to know whether there were dinosaurs in Fairfield. Here's his answer. <laughs> We're here to talk about giant extinct hairy monsters that lived in the Ice Age in Iowa. There were 10 ton woolly mammoths. There were one ton lions. There were not one, but two kinds of saber tooth. Where do we start? Well, of course we start with prairie dogs. There were prairie dogs in the Ice Age. This jaw I have right here is from a prairie dog species alive and well today. It's a nice little jaw. Now let's see how much evolution have changed prairie dogs. On this card is a jaw and part of the body of a 1.6 million year old prairie dogs. What has happened in all that time to our wonderful prairie dogs? Well, look at this. I'm a pretty good osteologist, a bone guy. I can't see any difference. There are guys who have PhDs in prairie dogology. They can't see any difference. Over 1.6 million years, nothing happened to prairie dogs, nothing. There's a lesson for us. If you wanna avoid mass extinction, don't be a mammoth. Don't be a one-ton lion. Don't be either of the two kinds of saber-toothed cats. Be something little. Be a mole, be a vole, be a mouse, be a prairie dog, be a chipmunk. Little guys are immune to extinction. Okay, let's go up the food chain. We just had a little plant eater, prairie dog. Let's get something bigger like this. Megalonyx, a ground sloth, a plant eater. These were invaders from the south starting about four million years ago. Huge guys, this is bigger than a big black bear. This is a small ground sloth, the giant one would tower over us at 20 feet tall, as heavy as an elephant. They're distant relatives of tree sloths. They had gigantic claws for ripping up the soil and pulling out all the juicy tubers and rhizomes and all the other stuff. And they could pull down branches too. And they were in Iowa, two different species. And elsewhere, this particular species made it all the way to Alaska where it could look across the Bering Strait and almost, almost see Russia. Now these guys are famous for being discovered by one of the greatest scientists in the history of the United States, Thomas Jefferson. He loved fossils. He had fossils of this species on his desk in the White House. He had another room dedicated to Ice Age fossils from Kentucky and Indiana and Iowa too. He named it Megalonyx, which means giant lion. Because he started out with fossil claws, didn't have a head, fossil claws. He said, that looks like a lion. 
Later on, when complete skeletons of sloths were found, folks said, wow, that's a mistake, but it's understandable. So Megalonyx bears the name Jeffersoni in his honor, and there were many of these all through the Ice Age. They had wonderful jaws, wonderful claws, but a really tiny brain. So a fun animal to watch feeding, but you wouldn't want to play chess with one. Okay, now for something completely gigantic. Thunder thighs. The left femur, thigh bone, of a woolly mammoth. This guy is from Alaska. Iowa produces a lot of fossils like this. That's the ball joint that fits in the hips. This tremendous shaft, stronger than an elephant. And the little notch there for the kneecap. Herds of these animals fed very near the glaciers in the coldest part of the environment. So imagine these animals covered with insulation, a layer of hair, long hair, and guard hair, and underneath that, a thick layer of curly insulation hair. So equipped, thunder thighs could feed on lichen and other plants almost to the edge of the glacier. Mammoths had a problem. Evolution had to design their teeth, redesign them so they could grind the toughest grass. Solution, the mammoth molar. This is the last molar. They had six of them that would move in the jaw from the back to the front. And these ridges are really, really tough enamel. And in between is softer cement and dentine. The more the tooth wore, the more like a carrot grater it was. This is just about ideal for chopping and shredding and pulverizing the toughest Ice Age grass. Here's the whole head. This is a Siberian mammoth, one of the very last. This is from about 5,000 years ago, lived in an island in the Arctic. By that time, Iowa mammoths were already extinct. But it shows the shape that let mammoths be the most successful grass eaters. Long tusks curving around for fighting each other or for clearing the snow off lichen and grass. These giant molars, self-sharpening. Strong jaw muscles. Now for the something that's totally cool, that hole. I love this hole. Okay. Osteologist, people who study bones love big holes. That's the hole for the trunk. Through that hole came nerves and blood vessels that went to the upper lip. Now I have a tiny one. Most mammals have tiny ones. This hole would tell you, even if all elephants were gone today, this hole tells you there was a gigantic muscular organ coming out of here, the trunk. And that was the other key to mammoth success all through the Ice Age. Now I promised you guys two, not one, but two saber tooths, two different kinds of saber tooth who lived in Iowa. Here's the most famous one, Smilodon, eye there, big eyes, broad nose, good sense of smell for a cat, these huge upper canines, which are sharp edged for cutting through delicate parts of a mammoth, maybe the abdomen, maybe the neck. But look at this. You remember the giant hole in a mammoth that was for the giant upper lip? These saber tooths have the largest holes for the lip muscles and nerves of any cat. Well, there wasn't a trunk attached here. What does a cat have that's in the lips that need giant nerves? The whiskers, the whiskers, the spread of whiskers here was bigger than a giant otter's. These animals could fight, could attack, could kill on moonless nights in dark forests or dark Bushes, all of these saber tooths had the fantastic whiskers. Now, I did promise you two, not one saber tooth, so follow me down. Here we have the other saber tooth. This is my favorite. This is the speedy saber tooth. The Smilodon up there had giant, short, muscular legs and arms like a jaguar, an ambush predator, a few steps, and it would leap. These guys, homotheres, totally different, really long legs, especially in the front, very, very fast. 
They could do hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of yards and catch virtually any other big animal in Iowa in the Ice Age. And then, it's got the hole right there. It's got that wonderful hole for the nerves and blood vessels going to the muzzle, for the gigantic whiskers. So this is a scarily beautiful design of a running predator. It's like a super cheetah armed with gigantic sharp-edged knives and powerful jaws. So Iowa in the Ice Age, from a predator point of view, was a wonderful place. We just met the two different kinds of saber tooth which hunted in Iowa in the Ice Age. They weren't alone. There was another cat, the super lion. This gigantic species ranged all over North America and Europe too. This is a male skull. It would be twice as heavy as a big male tiger today or a big lion. This would push a half ton. And like lions today, it would use the incredible strength of the claws and the front feet to drag down its prey. Big enough, strong enough to attack the gigantic Ice Age buffalo. And we know that happened. In Alaska, a species of giant Ice Age buffalo was preserved with its hide. What's cool about the buffalo? In the skin was embedded the broken cusp of the meat-cutting tooth of a giant lion. That's what I call a CSI fossil. It tells you who was eating whom, where and when. Now we're not done with the apex predators of Ice Age Iowa, not quite. We had two saber tooths, ginormous lion, and now we need the killer bear, Arctodus. This species was all over Europe and Asia, North America, South America. It had killing equipment, like a polar bear's, a big lateral incisor, so have another fang there that interlocked with the lower fangs. Powerful jaw muscles. For a bear, pretty long legs, great strength. Molars for crushing roots and berries, the salad portion of the entree. These Arctotus bears got twice the size of polar bears, a ton, a ton and a half, up to 3,000 pounds of killer bear. Polar bears today are the only bears that will hunt you, that will sniff the ground and follow you, or follow a walrus, or a reindeer. Back in the Ice Age, the Arctotus bears were like that and more so. Giant, intelligent, strong, powerful bites, so all in all, the Ice Age of Iowa had one of the most marvelous arrays of top predators the world has ever seen.